Good morning beautiful people welcome back to another mb heritage farm video so no it's still early yet it's somewhere around 7 15 in the morning uh, every morning i usually try to get about two hours of work out here between 5 and 7 or 5 30 to 7 30 before we start our day uh, and that's where we're at now and uh, while we was out here harvesting some produce we actually seen some of our melons was ready to go now these will be the first melons that we get this season we're harvesting actually cantaloupe right now they are Athena cantaloupe. This is a hybrid. They're about 85 day variety. When we planted them, we kept record. We know it's really, really close. We also see some dieback. We can smell these things from the garden. They smell great. So we know some of them's ready. We're going to go ahead and grab them. And we realize we've never made a video on showing you guys how to harvest cantaloupe. Now we've got one on melon. If you guys are looking on how to harvest watermelon at the perfect time, we still have secrets nobody else is using. They're scientifically proven. So go ahead and click this link here if you're looking for harvesting watermelons because it's absolutely different than it is harvesting cantaloupes. There are some similarities, but a lot of differences, guys. So you want to go ahead and keep the information separate. Let's go ahead and show you guys the cantaloupe and show you how we get them out at the perfect time. So here we are at the watermelon patch. Um, they are starting to run their course, which also tells me we got to have some ripe ones in there. I'll go ahead and jump in and show you guys a watermelon real quick so we can show you the differences in the two. Now for a really quick demonstration, we have three uh, melons here. Over here's one. They're all 20 pounds and bigger. I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, just a really quick uh, to show you the difference in between the two so this is the sangria melon you'll notice how the stripes are a little bit different so we don't really follow that method of the two fingers on the stripe all that stuff we don't do the thumping even though all melons will sound different you'll learn certain varieties already have a thicker or thinner rind all melons are going to sound different so we don't use that method what we do is we roll the melon over make sure it's got a nice field spot we call this the field spot and uh, it's definitely yellow we will at least check them when they start to turn beige yellow and even dark dark yellow to orange at sign number one sign number two we will find the stem coming off of the melanin and we will check two things not one but two we will first check the tendril from this stem all the way out the very first tendril that we find it's rotted and gone just rotted and gone see now, right beside of that tendril should be a spoon leaf. Right here is a rotted spoon leaf. This leaf indicates sweetness, and this tendril indicates ripeness. Now, a lot of guys will just go ahead and harvest a melon because this tendril is dead and shriveled up. They don't check the spoon leaf, and then they don't understand why they harvested their melon, and it still just don't taste right. We always watch the spoon leaf, the tendril, and the field spot. That's it on watermelons. We don't do any other that. So there's you a quick brief description on watermelon harvesting, just in case. So here we are in our cantaloupe row. Now, this ain't weed just hanging over, guys. All this is elderberry in here. Just big old massive elderberry bushes. So we're just going to try to deal with these old guys, get them out of the way, and show you guys the difference in the cantaloupe and the melons. Now again, these guys are around 85 days, so you, as you can tell, there's some dieback and they're running their course. We do have some ripe cantaloupes in here, but we also have some that are not ripe. Now, here's one right in front of me that we're gonna show you guys. It's pretty big. It's probably about, I don't know, three pounds, four, it's pretty dense. But the first thing we're gonna do is, we're just gonna go ahead and check the tendril. And these guys have a spoon also. So we're going to follow the stem all the way down. Keep going until we find the very first branch that has the tendril in the spoon. Now, normally, it would be here, but we're going to follow it on out, and here it is. Now, you follow it on out to your main branch, going back to your plant, and you will find the spoon leaf and the tendril. Well, the tendril's gone, and the spoon leaf is gone. Right here's the tendril. On my finger it's rotted the spoon leaf is here it's rotted but as you can tell with this cantaloupe it's still not ripe so when you harvest your cantaloupe you want to make sure there is absolutely no green in here now sometimes you'll find them in a grocery store like this but just like melons cantaloupes really don't ripen after they come off the vine when they sit so you want to make sure there's not a whole lot of green in here also this 
uh, cantaloupe here has a rhiny smell. It does not smell like cantaloupe, but it's very faint. You can't really smell it that all unless you pick it up and stick it to your face. But as you can see, our spoon and tendrils gone, and we do have some color, but this cantaloupe is still not ready to pick. Unlike the watermelons, um, we would probably have to throw this to the chickens if we went off of the spoon leaf and the tendril, which works just like clockwork with watermelons. Now a sure-fired way that your cantaloupe, and they just don't have to be Athena cantaloupe, but the sure-fired way is when you walk up on your garden, you're going to smell cantaloupe. And it's not going to be a rotted smell, but it'll be a really nice, fragrant smell of fruit. You'll be able to smell your melons before you get probably a foot up on them. That's a good sign. The next sign is the color. Notice we don't have a lot of green. No fair on this bad boy. It does have a field spot, just like a watermelon. It's not soft, but I can actually push in a little bit on this melon. That's another good sign. I can smell it again really good as I move it around. There's no rot. Um, I'm not going to thump this melon at all. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk back and find the first node right here, our tendril. It's missing, it's gone, it's already fell off and rotted. We don't have any indicators here because most of the stuff that will tell you that this cantaloupe is ripe is already rotted off. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to snap this baby off the vine. We're going to take her in with us and we're going to see what she looks like inside. Okay, everybody. When you get your cantaloupe in, make sure you rinse all the field dirt off. Do not cut crossways, but cut long ways. Um, I'll go ahead and give you another little secret that we like to use here with our cantaloupe and our watermelon. Once we get our melons sliced open, we will cover them in saran wrap, put them in the fridge overnight, and that will help activate the sugar enzymes in these melons and make them taste so much better. Now, as you can tell, this thing is perfectly harvested. You cannot get it any better, and I'll show you why. These Athena cantaloupe, the seed sack detaches itself when it's perfectly ripe. You don't even have to cut it or dig it out with a spoon. It comes out very easy by just touching it with your finger, and I'll show you right here. Just dig in, clamp it, lift it up, and you don't even have to cut it out, dig it out with a spoon. That's how you know you can't get any closer on harvesting this thing at the perfect time. And it smells so good in here. I wish I could let you guys smell it. Now, this video was not made to debunk methods of the two-finger stripe method or just harvesting by the field spot method or the tendril method. If it works for you, then do it. All I'm saying is, scientifically, those things are not in the book when it comes to harvesting melons. Now, I'm not saying just because they're not scientifically proven, they don't work. I'm just saying I want to stick to the things that I do know. Absolutely 100% work. Sorry, guys. That's what you get here with MB Heritage Farm. Cold, hard facts not wives tales and myths thank you guys for watching we love you guys we hope you have a great day now i gotta get my butt to work you guys keep on keeping on we'll do our best to see you next time